Hi, I'm Tom from the SQL Tools division at Redgate Software, and today we're going to have a quick look at our SQL prompts. Just stuff, okay. So, uh, SQL prompts are added into Management Studio. Um, it's uh, almost an IntelliSense style tool, so auto completion, but it's got a lot more options as well. I can uh, start typing, so I type use, and then all I need to do is press the first letter of the database name, and we can simply drop in the database adventure works. It's also got built in snippets, so um, all I need to do to actually drop in something like select star from is go down SSF and we can also complete that to select star from. Um, we can also continue, it's prompting us at each step. Uh, so person.contact. We can also even uh, create co join conditions on the fly. So if we wanted to join our contacts table onto our uh, contact credit card. Once we type the on statement, you can see that it's popped up with the join conditions for us to use. Okay. Not only um, does it allow us to, to create those conditions and create our queries on the fly like that, but we can also create quite complex uh, where conditions. So uh, if I were to type WH, we can drop in where, and where perhaps the left uh, three digits of the phone number are equal to 212. And very quickly we can actually get the results that we're after. Um, also we can go back and actually expand out our wildcard using SQL prompt. So that will drop in all of our columns in there. Okay, I guess we, didn't, we okay. didn't want all of them, uh, then instead of expanding that out fully, if I go back to, to this point, um, I can use control left and we've actually got our column picker. So at that point we can just say that we want first name, Last name, middle name, for example. Oh, nice. I don't know. Drop those in as well. Cool. Now, obviously, this is a little bit messy um, because you know I, I'm not very tidy when I'm writing my queries. Um, but if I want to tidy that up, SQL Prompt's got SQL formatting built in. So yep. you just click SQL Prompt Five and format SQL, and that will lay that out. Awesome. All out nice. I'm so annoyed you can't do that in Management Studio. <laughs> so that's our SQL Prompt tool. There's um, lots of other features in there: column level dependencies. Uh, scriptures alter, loads of different stuff. I really encourage you to download it and give it a try. While you're there, why not take a look at SQL search as well? Good stuff. Okay, thanks, Scott. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll come back in a minute. We're going to do another one? Yep. Do you want to show source control? We can keep going. Yeah, okay. Right, let's let's go. have a look at source control. Do it all in one, one video. Why not? So, um, SQL source control is again and works in conjunction with Management Studio, fully integrated into your development environment. Um, what we're actually going to do here is imagine that a, a new developer has joined our team, so we're going to set up a new database uh, for that particular developer. We're going to call them Newbie. I'm not sure if the camera's picking this up, so sorry to <laughs> anyone watching. There's a little camera's small, not the best isn't it? It's alright. It's, right. it's this camera's fault. Okay. I need to get better equipment. So. <laughs> Um, so once we've created our new database, we need obviously to populate with all of the objects that are currently in source control. Um, so the first thing that we need to do is link this to our source control repository, which is currently it's empty. Right click on the database, link the database to source control. Um, we can, if we're using Subversion, we can paste in our URL for Subversion. We also support Team Foundation, Vault, Zar, CVS, Git, Recure, loads and loads, pretty much anything with a command line interface. Um, there's also a built-in evaluation repository, so if you just want to get started quickly, uh, it's a perfect one to use. We're actually using it here today. So I'm going to select the Eventuate SQL Bits repository and click Link. And you notice that the database icons now change to a green colour to show that we're actually connected to the source control repository. Okay. Um, so if I go ahead and change to the Get Latest tab, here are all of our objects. Um, we can actually review the script for each object so as we go down. And you'll notice that the middle one here, Contact Type, we've actually specified that this table is a static data table. So not only is it storing our schema, but any static data that's contained within this table as well. Okay. Okay. Um, I know that we want everything. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and get the latest and as I'm doing this you'll actually see that the uh, Object Explorer expands with all of the uh, objects as they come down. There we go. So um, once this is done we're actually ready to start working on our database, we're ready to start making the changes that we need to make. Um, so let's imagine we wanted to alter a stored procedure. Uh, so we can open a new query, again I'm using SQL prompt here, AP, to uh, drop in the alter procedure. Uh, snippet and we're going to alter the USP get contact store procedure. Maybe we want to add to this um, 
email address. Drop down it's that email address into there. Once again, I'm going to lay this out so that it looks, looks nice, and uh, I'm going to make that change to the database. So what you'll see now is over again in the Object Explorer, um, we've got a new blue indicator to show us that we've made a change to an object in our local development database that hasn't yet been committed to source control. Okay. Um, we don't have to stop there. I mentioned earlier that we had uh, a static data table, so let's go ahead and uh, insert a new row into that. II is the snippet for insert into. Uh, pick our table, which was contact type. Drop that in and um, let's have a SQL bits 10d4. Just because I'm not sure how many times I've done it already. Right, okay. So uh, we'll go ahead and execute that, and that will add a new row to our, our static data table. Yeah. And, and you carry on pretty much like this, working on the database with the objects, um, um, not deviating really from what you do normally. Okay. Once you're happy, you've done all the testing that you need, right click on the database, commit changes to source control. And here you're presented with a list of the changes that we've made. So you can see we've got our uh, static data change, uh, our additional row, and we've also got our schema change where we added email address to the stored procedure uh, for, for getting the contacts. To actually commit that, we add our comment. Probably something slightly more helpful than that, but uh, you get the idea. Mm -hmm. And uh, go ahead and click the commit button. And that's it. So our changes are now submitted to source control. Mm -hmm. and ready for the, the next user to come along, pull those down, and they can continue the cycle working uh, with the database under source control without losing any of their changes. So really is that simple now to, to get your database under source control along with your application. Good stuff. Thank you very much, Tom. Much appreciated.